Hey everyone, this is Josh with Josh Wright Piano TV. Today's episode is in response to Chuck, and his question was um, how to improve on Chopin Etude Opus 25, number one, which is commonly referred to as the Aeolian Harp Etude. Um, this etude is deceivingly hard. <laughs> um, so, what what makes it difficult is people often say, "Oh, that's one of the easy Chopin Etudes," and I guess in comparison to some of them, this one might come off as easier uh, for some reasons, since it's just arpeggiations, but it actually has surprising difficulty in it. So I'm just going to play maybe the first page of this. So, um, just to make it sound so fluid, uh, I'm by no means perfect on it, but I feel like over the years I've gained more understanding about this piece, and there's a lot that goes into it. The first thing is you have three levels of voicing. The first is the left hand. Now, the left hand kind of has two levels. We want this bass note to be rich, but not overbearing, and then this is just color. And just a slight bit more on that bottom note, It's hardly even noticeable, but just a little bit of, I guess, shaping your hand to it and going in little circles with your hand like this around. And just adding a little bit of emphasis to that bottom. So drop a little bit into that bottom note, drop. Okay, so that's the first level. That's the softest level. Um, and then we want the next level to be the inner voices of the right hand. But really those are color as well. And and the the left hand and the right hand combine both to have uh, really colorful, um, liquid, fluid, flowing uh, color. So you could even practice it by itself like that. And then when you put, now, the, the right hand melody has to be brought out now. So I'm just gonna do this really rudimentary. I'm just gonna bring out the right hand. This is a great series of exercises that you should do at home. So I'm just going to practice bringing out the right hand and the bass left hand a little bit. And I'm going to really exaggerate the right hand bringing it up. And making sure that I really play up into the key like that rather than hitting down like that. Cause of that motion you have, that downwards motion, the uglier your sound will be. But if you circ or, um, circle with your wrist, you can create a, f a quick fluid motion while still maintaining good tone quality. Okay, so now what you have to do is you have to go through and you have to shape the right hand. So I would do that by itself first. To there. Okay, now that's the end. Most people think you play that next one and then it starts, but it's actually dum to there, and then breathe into the next phrase. Chopin's always good about kind of displacing the the start of the phrase um, so it doesn't come just on a downbeat. It's it's it leads into the next one and he does that beautifully here. And then you put it just right hand, shaping it to the F. Phrase. Okay, and then you put that together. Don't get too soft yet, because these are all diminuendoing in levels. This is the next level. Next level. So that gives us an idea. Next thing 
is little exercises. How can we make this even? Okay, so um, there's a variety of rhythms. You can use three rhythms, five rhythms, six rhythms, seven rhythms, and eight rhythms. So pretty much in each of those groups, you're just going to take that amount of notes every every uh, as a group, and then you'll just do groups of those notes. So three rhythms I want to talk about because those will be the most helpful. So you're going to go two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Sorry, actually, we're going to start on the, the first note. One, two, three, one, two, three. As you can see, this is an amazing exercise to keep the hands aligned exactly together. Um, and then I would alternate the note that I start on. So I, this was, the first note was my long note, and then short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short, long. So I was kind of ending on the top and bottom notes. That's got to be the most standard way to do it because that's kind of where you're feeling your checkpoints are is the top notes and the bottom notes to make sure they're together so it's not all over the place sloppy like that. Um, but I would do the next note. So if you think about it, there's three variations you could do. You could do long, short, short, long, short, short. And then you could have the second note be long, short, short, long, short, short. And then the third note, long, short, short, long, short, short. So first one, long. Next one, displace that first one. Okay, now, now we start long, short, short, long. That one's really awkward. <laughs> the next one is, um, you're gonna start on the third note as your long note. So here's your long short, short. Do it hands alone to get the, the feeling of it, then put it hands together. That's really difficult. Um, I've spent so many hours uh, doing rhythms on a variety of pieces, including a lot of Chopin etudes. They really help. One thing that's changed my life uh, in piano um, are five, seven, and nine rhythms. Now I'm just gonna touch on these right now because I don't think they're practical unless uh, the student is really advanced. This didn't help me that much until I felt perfectly comfortable with my pieces and then it just enhanced them. So you could do a five rhythm. I would just do this hands alone and then hands together to get a real mastery because five, seven, and nine are odd numbers. They don't line up evenly. So one, two, three, four, five. 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 And then start on the next note. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. That really helps me. And then you can imagine seven. That's really hard. And then nine is even harder. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you're really wanting to do this. Just like that, Let those quick rhythms. Try that. Um, don't spend too much emphasis, but I did want to include that on this video. Mostly work with those three rhythms on this piece and then think about the levels of voicing and then shaping your melody. That's why, where you run into the trouble of being kind of ugly and you're playing and just sounding vertical. Sounds monotonous. Make sure you start soft. And then add a little rubato to ease into your phrase and ease out of them. That's helped me a lot. I hope this video has been helpful, and if anyone has any questions at all, feel free to email me. I'll be happy to do a video on any request you have. My email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. Thanks for joining me today.